Hola, buenas tardes. Oh, yep. Just for the people watching this at a later date, this is a live stream tour. You'll hear me interacting with the audience. You won't see the chat because it's not live. If you're watching it on YouTube at a later date. So just bear that in mind. Okay. Say hello, everyone. Put your name in the chat. Hey, Mark. It's just stopped raining here. How's life, Mark? Good day. Marlambra Wonga. Barbie, good morning. In Canada still? Nova Scotia? And Susan, is Susan there as well? Um, Sarah, how's it going, Sarah? Lemon Lane. Oh, hello, Lemon Lane. I've not seen you before, I don't think. Hi, Diane. Hi, hello, Linda. How's it going? You must be enjoying your semi retirement by now, are you? Gallivanting all over the world. <coughs> hey, Kerry, how's life? And sunny Scotland today. It was a nice sunny day this morning, and then it just started to rain there. Ah, Lisa Marie. Ah. <laughs> How's Lisa Marie doing? Can't really stay, the rain's just stopped actually. I checked, it was a beautiful sunny morning this morning, then it started to cloud over. And I checked the weather forecast, and it says a chance of rain at 7 o'clock tonight. And it was only a 35% chance of. Um, hello, Martin. 35% um, chance of rain at 7 pm tonight. So I left my umbrella behind. Despite the fact that I know more than anyone, it rains 191 days of the year, on average. And I should have known not to leave my umbrella at home. But what did I do? Leave it at home. <laughs> and then, just before the tour spell, about 15 minutes ago, it started to rain. So I've got the bus up to the town from Leith, and I've went to my one of my favourite takeaways. It's Good Friday today. Thank you very much. Arty, and yes, I uh, one of my favourite takeaways is in Edinburgh, near the university. So I came up to get some uh, mozzarella, not brie, or mozzarella. Mozzarella, I was going to get a mozzarella baguette with tomato, basil, and it was shut. So then I goes, okay, I'll go to my other, my second favourite takeaway shop that does perfect chicken noodle soup. So I walked about 15 minutes to the takeaway shop, closed. Every other shop in Edinburgh is open apart from my two favourite takeaways. And then it started to rain. So I must admit I was swearing quite a lot. <laughs> how's life, Martin? <laughs> Kathy, how's it going? <laughs> One of these days, you know. I yeah, stayed in my bed. <laughs> Let's make, see if we can make it a great Friday. Never mind a good Friday. Let's see if we can make it a, a great Friday. Yes, happy Easter to anyone who's celebrating. So that you see all the Instagrammers here. Come from all over the world, and of course this new TV programme is, um, what's it called? One Day or something like that. It's on Netflix just now. So um, it's made it even more, it was one of the most popular top ten Instagram sites in Edinburgh. And now it's even more popular because of this bloody Netflix programme. But I'm actually just... Um, Back in the olden times, I'd be outside Edinburgh by now. These are the city walls. These are the 17th century walls here. This is a Telfer wall, as you can see here. But it's actually been linked to the flooding wall. This dates back to the early 16th century. It started to get built from 1513 onwards. And some of you might recognise the name flooding, because that's where a famous battle took place between England and Scotland. Scotland and France had a treaty signed in 1295 called the Alliance. It's now called the Old Alliance. And basically it was a treaty, like a trading treaty, you could trade freely. It's like an early form of the European Union. But it also meant that France and Scotland were both Catholic countries, and the kings and queens and nobility would marry each other. And of course, when it came to war, France was regularly at war with England, as was Scotland. So the Scots and the French streamed up, and look at this, what they did here. This is a 1513 wall onwards, right? And in 1876, 
the, the walls started to come down at the end of the 18th century, okay, from 1767 onwards. They started taking down the city walls. Edinburgh was 0 0.2 square miles um, size, that was it. So they started to build a new town from, 16, from 1767 onwards. And then in 1876, as we can see on the right in here, somebody decided it was appropriate, the Victorians of course, decided it was appropriate to build a window in the 16th century walls. <laughs> I've never understood the mentality of the Victorians. Um, yeah, I mean, why would you build a window and a wall? <laughs> it dates back to 1513, potentially, you know? Like, hey, Ronnie. So, like, the Flodden Wall, the Battle of Flodden. So up to 40,000 Scots invaded England on behalf of the French. The French were fighting England, and the French had pulled in the treaty part, which said, you must attack England for the French. Viva la France. And so, of course, up to... They reckon it was one of the largest armies ever gathered in Scotland. But bear in mind, you have to be careful with the numbers, because people tended to exaggerate the numbers back in these times. But they reckon up to 40,000 Scots invaded England, just over the border. Um, between England and Scotland is a place called Flodden. And the Scots vastly outnumbered the French, eh, the English, sorry. Despite that, a series of calamitous uh, errors um, led to Scotland getting defeated. It's one of our worst ever military disasters. Up to a third of the Scots were killed, including the King. Most of the nobility was wiped out as well. And Edinburgh already had a wall stretching down from the castle. Here we can see in the background, dates back to the 1470s. But it was only a small wall. So, in 1513, after the king died, the Scots were, of course, scared the English were going to attack us. So they built a, a wall around Edinburgh and named it after the Battle of Flodden. So Edinburgh was a completely walled city. And see here, this is a little girl. I've, I've spoken about this little girl here before. Let's, let's go underneath this fence here. You see this little girl here? If we can see her. Bessie Watson. A little plaque here. You can see it, we'll try to zoom in. Bessie Watson here. This is where she used to live. She was a son. Well, she was only a child, actually. She was quite a sickly child, actually. Her parents were quite wealthy. And, um, she like that. And, um, her mother decided to send her to bagpipe lessons. So, to try and improve her lung capacity and so on, you know, so um, she became a bagpipe player. But her mother was um, quite political as well, you know, she was in the suffragette period. So, um, yeah, she became a suffragette, the little bagpiper lady, little Bessie Watson. Um, she, used, she actually led a suffragette march in Edinburgh. And she got dressed up as, um, oh, what was the Scottish Queen? Queen Margaret? But she got dressed up as Queen Margaret, the Scottish Queen. And then, um, yeah, and the suffragettes were getting put in prison, of course, as well. And she would go to the prison and play outside the prison with the bagpipes to cheer up the suffragettes that had been in prison. Ah, oh, it's back now. It should be okay now. Just lost everyone. Getting hypnotised. <laughs> I'm back again, but I've lost everyone. <laughs> I don't know if it's just the sheer number of people or what. I mean, it's. Uh, hopefully it's back now. <sighs> back. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep them. Oh, there's a new shop opened. Expertly, expertly crafted. Caught in the corner here. From memory. Let's see what happens if I get round here.
<laughs> Obviously, I'm quite busy today. But I thought I would take a gamble. Because I haven't been in Edinburgh for so long, to do a tour, a few weeks now, I thought I'd come into Edinburgh and show off Edinburgh. Hoping, you know, that things might have changed. <laughs> it says it's okay now, I don't know if you can still hear or see me, anyone? It says I'm back. The gimbal is on the whiskey. I'll tell you what, I wish I was on the whiskey. <laughs> I'm going to go home and have a whiskey. Facebook Live seemed more stable. Yeah, because that's right, because I switched to Facebook Live. But that was quite bad as well. I couldn't connect to that either. On the Facebook Live, so I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just num numbery people or um, bad signal in the area. No idea. There's St. Giles Cathedral. We're on the Royal Mile. I can hear some street performers. So I'm sure if I think the signal, the signal might go again here. Um, and then, but it should pick up after here. If the, thing, if the signal disappears from memory, it uh, picks up again and then it's okay from that point onwards. But obviously, things can change. Things can go wrong. Mobile phone. I'm Vodafone. One of the, the biggest ones, but yeah. It's because Edinburgh is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. They're not allowed to put the 5G masks in, you see. <laughs> That's terrible, man. I've never been playing live. These guys annoy me, they don't play live. There's trash, he's trash. Come on. God. Does the signal seem okay now, everyone? As far as I can see, the signal seems to be okay just now. I can't see, see much, but... Um, it doesn't seem I haven't got a bad signal. <laughs> How's Trish doing? A couple of kilted men for you ladies, or gentlemen. Tour guides, of course. There's old Adam Smith. Good so far. Signal's fine now. Yeah, I'm sure after here the signal's fine. No cone in his head today, old Adam Smith. He's not got a cone in his head. See, so the market cross there. So the market cross, the market cross, that's not the original position. It was over here. See on the ground here. That's where it was. The last time you were there it was the Queen's funeral. Oh, was it? God, it's the same street performers. Same street performers are here all the time. Same ones. Oh, Mohican man's here. I can see Mohican man behind me. <laughs> For anyone who knows the Mohican man, it's Cheryl here. Cheryl! Cheryl Cole! Where are you, lass? I don't know if Cheryl's still on holiday, actually. Susan, oh, hello, Susan. How are you doing? Didn't know if you were here today. Just having a bit of a few signal problems today in Edinburgh, which usually happens right enough. I should learn my lesson. I keep on living in hope. That one day the signal might just change, you know. So obviously it's the Easter weekend today. Well, or Easter weekend this weekend. Oh, this big panda doing, man. I've not seen the panda before. Is <laughs> it get your photograph taken with a panda? <laughs> Hi, I'm Panda Macroni. 
add me as a friend. Photos for donation. Uh, so you get a photo taken with a boy for a couple of pounds or something like that. Um, yeah, that's a new one on me. This is um, 219 the High Street here. Do the street performers need licences? Well, there's a bit of ambiguity about that. They are supposed to. But because Edinburgh is a festival city, you know, they, they only give out so many passes to the traders and the performers. And I'm not sure if they're actually licensed the performers. Depends on um, if they're taking money, you know, because you're not allowed to take cash, but you can accept tips. Strange. Edinburgh is quite a strange place about street performers. We just got here. It's a beautiful day. Well, it's a bit cloudy. It was beautiful this morning, and then it said it was no rain today. And then, of course, it rained just before the tour started. But if you look here at 219 the High Street, there's a little plaque you can see on the wall up here. And this is dedicated to Dr. Elsa Ingalls. She was the second um, female practicing doctor in Scotland, Elsa Ingalls. And she was born in India in 1864, actually. Dr. Elsa Ingalls. And she had, um, her parents were rich. This is when in, uh, Britain colonised India, of course. And her parents were Scottish and they were quite well off, quite well to do, high up in the Indian government, British Indian government, so to speak. And she wanted to become a doctor. I can hear a bagpipe player. I can't see the, Oh, I can see the bagpipe player now. And um, yeah, so there was the Edinburgh Seven led by Sophia Jex Blake. Sophia Jex Blake had applied to Edinburgh University to become a doctor to study medicine. And Edinburgh University, of course, was only men only at that time. So, um, the university rejected her. And says, we're not changing the, the rules just for one lady. So she put an advert in the newspapers. And another six ladies joined her. Edinburgh Seven. So the bagpipers just stopped because they've turned up. I collect pandas. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so the Edinburgh Seven ladies got to go to Edinburgh University and they qualified. There was big riots broke out when they were supposed to qualify uh, set their exams. Um, but some of the men, the staff members helped smuggle them in. So they got to set their exams. But to Edinburgh University's eternal shame, they didn't give them their degrees. Um, but Sophia Jex Blake became a practicing doctor in Edinburgh. Hopefully, this guy will play a tune. Oh, his kilt just really blew up there, you see that? He's, he needs to get weights in his kilt in case his kilt blows up and gives the ladies a fright. They went for Barney, yeah. <laughs> In fact, I've just remembered there's a famous photograph with the Queen, right? You know the Queen Elizabeth II, not the ship, the Queen. And um, before she died, obviously, there's a famous picture of her sitting with a Scottish regiment, and one of the they've all got kilts on, like you know, and one of the squaddies has got his um, his nether regions exposed, shall we say? So there's a picture of the Queen in the. The Scottish guy must have known he had his tackles on display, so he spread his knees. So all you can see is his meat and two veg next to the Queen. <laughs> hey Marlon! Yeah, this had bad signaling problems. You're lucky you've came just now. Signaling problems? Again in Edinburgh? So it's quite nice skies now, isn't it? Look at the blue skies now. Yeah, I think he's been on the whiskey, that guy, man. Eh? So if you want to search for that image on Google, <laughs> you can Google, um, I don't know what you're trying to Google to search for the Queen, Queen exposed by Scottish kilts wearer or something like that. And you might stumble across the picture of the guy with his meat and two veg out for the Queen. <laughs> Life Marlin! This used to be a famous baked potato shop here. This was a baked see here, the Scottish gift shop. This was a famous vegetarian Scottish baked potato takeaway place. Had a few seats to sit in as well. 
and it had been open for about 25 years. And just last year, it eventually closed down. It's under. <laughs> oh, God. My favourite Mexican restaurant has closed down as well, look. The mission is unstable. Oh, it says I'm back again. Give me a break, Manny. In you know, what we back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm gone, gone. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Well, it says I'm back again, but I don't know if I am. So many restaurants closed during lockdown, yeah. It's just the, some of the, most of them survived here because they got funding from the government, but then the electricity is like so expensive here, and business costs and things like that. So it is really expensive here, like it is around the world, I suppose. But well, it says I'm back again. It says I'm back again. Sun's come out now. Sun's out, guns out, everyone. <laughs> There's the back of Edinburgh Castle there. It's a lovely day when the sun's out, isn't it? I say, I don't know what goes on with the signalling problems. You don't know if it's the number of people or... Because we must have got to be like in August and July. There's got to be no point in even coming near Edinburgh. At all. Um, but yeah, it's strange, isn't it? I don't know what goes on. See, such is life, as they say. <laughs> Nothing you can do but struggle on. At least we've got technology, internet, you know, when it works. <laughs> No band playing today. Oh well, I thought it might have been a band playing today. Taps off weather. Yeah, that's mostly a Glaswegian thing. Taps off, they say. How busy is the park today? I mean, the park's not that busy, actually. Mind you, the sun's just come out, actually. Usually on a nice day, it gets mobbed in here. The daffodils are out anyway. The daffodils are out. Yeah, it's not that busy. Few people in. What time is it? Half past two, I thought. Maybe we can get in lunch. So it's quite busy in Edinburgh, isn't it? Yeah. Edinburgh's kind of like busy all year round now. There's not really any. January's a little bit quiet, but even at the weekends it's quiet, but then at the weekends it gets busy. But um, we just got some crap news. Visit Scotland. Some of you may have seen it on the news or in the media. The Scottish, eh, what's it called? Visit Scotland, who are the official tourist organisation in Scotland. They're closing, they've got shops and all the tourist spots, you know. So if you're a tourist, you can go to the shop and get flyers and ask for thing about things to do, accommodation, day trips, tours, activities, excursions. And they were going to start selling my tours in their shop in the Royal Mile in Edinburgh. And they just announced a couple of days ago that all the shops are closing down. The shops are all closing down. All the Visit Scotland shops in Scotland are closing down over the next two years. So pretty devastating. So I've asked what's happening in the gas and I'm selling my tours. And uh, they're still trying to figure out what they're doing. They're moving everything online now. They're saying everybody's going online now. But what about all the old people, you know what I mean? A lot of our demographics are like American tourists and they're elderly. A lot of them don't have data on their phone as well, you know. So they like to go into the shops and you can pick up maps and all things like that. So I think it's a very short-sighted move, closing down the Visit Scotland shops. So I'm not too happy. 
But he's doing a good job. The city's staff are not getting paid off. Like, it's a Gothic rocket, the Scott, Walter Scott Monument. Finished in 1844. So Walter Scott sits at the bottom, of course, with his dog. You can get a guided tour up there. Obviously, the staircases get quite narrow at the top, but you know what I mean? <laughs> Years ago, he just used to let you go up randomly. Um, so we've left the old town now, so the Edinburgh, the centre is split into two main zones. The old town, where we started off the tour at the Flodden Wall. Edinburgh was a walled city from 1513 until 1767. But it was a filthy, crowded, stinking city. It was one of the worst cities in Europe. And so from 1767 onwards, they started to build the new town. And that's when all the rich decanted and moved into the new town here. So that's us linked into the new town now. The original new town was only three streets. Princess Street, George Street and Queen Street, where I am now, Princess Street. Is anyone coming to Edinburgh on vacation this year? I know certainly one person is. But if anyone has any questions they might like to get answered about Edinburgh, type in a chat and ask any questions you want. Quite nice. Ah, there's no band on today. He did not make it to the top. <laughs> get out of the way here. Yeah, I was going to go to the Botanics today as well. I was thinking about what to do today, and I was going to go to the Botanics, but there's a big Easter egg hunt on. It would have been fully people. <laughs> so I thought I'll not go today to the Botanics, I'll risk coming into Edinburgh, you know. And then, ooh, and then obviously that didn't go too well, but anyway. September. The Barbie's coming to Edinburgh in September with her friend Norma. They've both been to Scotland before and they're coming back. They enjoyed it so much. There's so much to see and do in Scotland, you know. You can spend weeks and weeks here, travelling around Scotland. Lisa is considering it. Ah, oh, you should come, Lisa. Well, you've been before, haven't you? So you know what it's like. You know how expensive it can be as well. So you don't come in July or August. Um, it's just so expensive in July and August. Uh, <laughs> Oh, the bus is going mad. Just try and watch out. There's so many new cycle lanes and all these mad cyclists and so on. You just never know who's going to... If you're going to get knocked down or... <laughs> or what. September is a good month to come to Edinburgh. I recommend September to people. It's a lot, although, although September now last year was just as busy in Edinburgh as August. But it is a lot less expensive because Edinburgh has the Fringe Festival, of course, in August, and the accommodation is just ridiculous. Six hundred dollars for a three-star hotel for one night, and uh, yeah, so it's just extortionate here in Edinburgh in August. So, so I do recommend um, September. It's usually nice. It's usually quite nice weather. I mean, to be honest, it doesn't matter what time of year you come to Scotland. The weather can be hit or miss. You know, sometimes it, be, it can be colder in June than February. <coughs> Gee whiz. As you can see, it's quite busy, but the, sig the signal's holding up, so it must just be the signal area. It mustn't be the number of people. I wonder if it's uh, the, the just crappy signals in Edinburgh. They tried to put in a new 5G mast. And it got refused permission because it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So they didn't allow the 5G mast. Well, here's the God good man. Repent, repent. Jesus loves you. <laughs> You've been to Edinburgh once. <laughs> There he is. The Duke himself, Wellington, on his horse, Copenhagen. No cone on his head like the Glaswegian one. Although sometimes you will see a cone on the dude's head. 
sometimes there is a call and they say, oh, there's a siren. There's enough two ambulances here. Oh, well, something's happened here. What's happened here? Fight, 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 fight. So I'll kick it off today, everyone. I was over in Edinburgh for four hours, but I will be back. Oh, I don't know what's going on here. Whatever it is, it's finished. The drama is over. Nothing to see here. <laughs> Let's see if we can cross this road without getting killed. Oh, by the way, see over here. See when you see a sign if you're driving into Edinburgh and you see a sign saying 25 miles to Edinburgh or 20 miles to Edinburgh. Well, that's where they record the measurement from was over there. That used to be the post office. And that's the post office centre of Edinburgh. Oh, another one. again. <laughs> Crazy busy today. Easter is quite early this year, isn't it? It's only March. What is it, March the 29th? Easter's quite early. This year. God almighty, man. Let's get across this road, man. Taking so long. Oh, you can tell all this. The Greek neoclassical architecture with the pillars and the columns and so on. Very nice. And wait till we see this one in a second. Look at this stunning piece of architecture up there. <laughs> the golden turn. <laughs> see it? The scuggly thing. Ah, oh, the schools are off, eh? Oh, aye. But look how busy it is here. And I've still got full signal. Ah, you have the Orthodox Church, somebody's in Greece. Yeah, see, there was an earthquake in Greece today. Where are all these people going? I'm going to cross the road because all these people are annoying me. Yeah, it's, um, I heard there was an earthquake in Greece today, 4.9 on the Richter scale or something like that. I'm assuming it didn't affect you, Diane. Yeah, because we had a... Uh, I seen it on the news, the news this morning. Earthquake in Greece. Much quieter on this side. Yeah, I, 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 I should have remembered to avoid Edinburgh during the school holidays, right enough. Schoolboy error! <laughs> There's Waverley Station over there. Look at this horrible architecture, brutalist architecture. A storm, a snowstorm. So bloody annoying, mate. Ah, so you're back. This is a Greek style monument here, a replica of the monument of Lycosetti from Athens. Dedicated to Dougal Stewart. More sirens. I see the signal's okay again. Just to get a different view of Edinburgh from here. You see the spire of St Giles Cathedral? Some people think it's based on the Scottish Crown Jewels. You've got the hub, the castle, the clock. Quite nice, isn't it? There you go. Fuck it. 
Honest like a god, man. You can't go anywhere and there's people sneaking up on you and looking in your way. <laughs> oh, God. I'm in the wrong job, man. There's Nelson's monument there, the time signal, of course. Nelson's monument. Whoa, my cable just fell. Yeah, there's just so many people trying to get photographs, and you'll never ever get a, peep, a photograph up here with nobody in it. Not like during the lockdown period. Classic views, isn't it? I know the rain's starting, man. Oh. And then I foresee is obviously the highest spot over there. Huh? I can see hundreds of people on top of that as well. Lovely views. So you saw how quick it took me to get up there. Well, it takes a few minutes to get up. I sometimes come up with my tour groups. You know when I do coach tours of Edinburgh? Sometimes I bring them up here for a group photograph shot. Uh, most people can make it up in about... The longest it's going to take is 10 minutes at the very most to get up here. And the views are quite spectacular as well. As you can see here. Stretching down to Firth for four, for cross to five. Why are people so obsessed with taking selfies of themselves? I just don't get this whole selfie thing. Is it not narcissism? Taking selfies all the time. To me, it seems a bit narcissistic, always want to get your photographs taken all the time. I don't, just don't understand it, man. Why are you obsessed? Why are they all obsessed with taking hundreds of photos of themselves? I just don't believe it, man. Maybe I'm just too old, eh? <laughs> I just don't get it. it was, why? I mean, have you not got enough photos of yourself? <laughs> Seriously, man. <laughs> I just say things out loud to cause trouble, you know. <laughs> Other people beside me looking at me saying, who's this Scottish twat slagging us for taking photographs of ourselves? But that's true, eh? Why would you want to take... Surely if you've got, like, about ten photographs of yourself, that's enough. What do you need more for? <laughs> that's phenomenal. Pretty sweet. Views, but... And the thing is, I don't even appreciate where they are. I just take photographs. Can you see that my son goes out clubbing and all that, right? And all they do is take videos of themselves clubbing. And I'm like, why are you taking videos of yourself clubbing? Can you not just dance and enjoy the night? And you see them all, they're all like, you know, they're all at a club, the DJ's playing or whatever. And they're like, oh, they've all got their phones up. Like recording the, D the DJ. I mean, just enjoy the night. <laughs> I'm going to sound like an old man more than here, am I? <laughs> But I just don't get it, eh? I really don't get it, man. And you even see it now with really young children. You see really young children when you ask them for a photograph, all the girls, they put their hand on their waist and they put their feet forward and pose. <laughs> it's like, who's teaching them that? <laughs> Live in the moment, you know? I mean, here's me walking about with a gimbal and a camera <laughs> and a phone right enough, but anyway, I'm doing it for a job. <laughs> Well, I mean, look, look, I mean, come on, buddy. You're not a supermodel, eh? People think they're models, man. Look, there's a rainbow coming up. Somewhere over the rainbow. I don't know if you can see it. There's a rainbow coming up here. There's my house. There's my house. I've lost my house. Oh, there it is. There's my house there. That little house. 
on the duck pout as well, I know. I just don't get it, to be honest, like. As I say, I'm probably just too old for it all. Which I'm kind of quite glad, like, you know. There was no mo mobile phones and all that when I was out clubbing. Thank God. <laughs> the states we used to get in partying back in the 90s and all that on the raves, you know. I'm so glad there's no any photographic evidence of my partying days when I was younger. <laughs> I'd be mortified to see photographs of myself when I was out partying. <laughs> Hello, Paul's house. Yeah, I should have stayed in my house. <laughs> I've been less asshole than today. I was hoping that rainbow was going to come out. I don't know if you can see the rainbow. It's just here. It's coming up there. It's just not strong enough. You can see over there, a bit of rain over there. So I'm not coming into Edinburgh tomorrow. I've got a tour on tomorrow at one o'clock. Um, I'm not coming into Edinburgh tomorrow. <laughs> there's no way, because I'll just be even busier tomorrow on a Saturday. So there's no way I'm uh, coming into Edinburgh, so I'll need to think about where I'm going to go tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I'll miss you tomorrow. You're only a heartbeat away. The far, far, far down there, of course, the Port of Leith, New Haven. All this area I see here, so this, this is a port of leaf down here where I live, obviously. And what they're doing is they're developing all the way along now to here, right? Then there's a gap. Then they've done another big development here. It's all industrial. This is all industrial along here on the shoreline. So the last few years, they've decided to try and change it from industrial, and they're building lots of houses down here. All down here, down the coast, because the views are spectacular. And down here... Towards Portobello, so Leith is here, well, we and Portobello is a way I'll along here, reason, and it's all industrial as well. And um, now they're going to change that as well to housing because they've got the views, you know. But the only ones who'll have the good views are the ones whose houses are right on the front. Um, so the houses behind them will not get very good views, but yeah, all down there, they're, um, they're all along the shoreline now. They're going to change it from industrial, the parts that are still industrial. They're going to change it in, um, into housing, so that'll be quite good, if you've got lots of money. <laughs> As you can see, it's quite busy. Oh, I get good views up here, let's see how I get a good views up here. They probably don't enjoy it at all, they just follow the in crowd. Yeah, we, I think we all, most of us are just too old, I think, eh? I am quite glad I missed it, like, you know. I'd rather be enjoying myself and worrying about what I look like on a camera, you know. So these are the old observatory buildings here, as you can see. Portobello will be busy tomorrow. Depends on the weather. There's not that much to see in Portobello as well, you know. There's not that much to see in Portobello. I might go to the botanics, see what the weather's like. See what's happening tomorrow. But I'm definitely not, I'm not coming to the centre of Edinburgh, there's just no point. It's even quite busy up here, look. 